All right, today we got a really cool video. We're checking out some super cool toys, like this brand new super spacious porta potty. Come in with me. Look at how much space there is. Optional accessory you could get is a disco ball up here. I mean, it's great. Now let's get to the boring stuff. So this is the anti-gravity cam, and we have Joral here Jor showing us. Huh? Let's do, let's do it one more time. Wait, Jor have I been saying it wrong this yeah, whole time? Jorel. 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 Seriously, for like the last three days, I've been calling him Joral. Non-stop. <laughs> so for those of you who haven't seen this thing in action, here's what it looks like. Yeah! What's up? And you did that on your own with your thumbstick. Just my thumbstick. That's a lot of stuff to think about, especially when you're standing at a cliff. Oh, <laughs> yes. On the bird. In the bird! In the bird, the bird. we got the bird! The bird. <laughs> the bird. We brought the bird in. Yeah. yeah that it's is, a, it's green, a union bird. <laughs> yeah, people. union bird. Let's take a look at this real quick. Just look at, look at this right here. What crazy person designed this? Oh, hey, Adam. <laughs> Adam is the creator of this contraption, the anti-gravity cam. Well, still photos don't do this justice. Right. All it does is pop up questions. Like sometimes the first thing they'll say is, oh, you'll never get that through a doorway because they see the arms right. up. But we do those shots all the time. All right, so here it is kind of in the collapsed mode. Yeah. But then you said you could break this down further in case you're trying to travel with it, right? Yeah, yeah, 15 minute tear down, 15 minute setup. I think this is the part mm -hmm. that just seems insane. But this is yeah. essentially creating a huge suspension system right. in, in a backpack. This is like having the elastic cords hanging off a bridge, but you can walk anywhere. So the camera just floats in front of you. This is a Fidelity commercial you shot, right? Yeah. Like uh, It trips me out because there's so many things where I was like, oh, that, that log must have been CG because right. you went straight through it. And then you showed me the behind the scenes. You actually just... Yeah. Everything's in camera. The frog, the log. Wait, this frog is not CG? No, it's real. You can actually see what? the camera lift over it because I didn't want to step on him. We had a frog okay. handler just to the left of a of, of frame going, don't step on the frog, and I had to lift the camera up. So you can actually what? see the camera go up a little bit. See it's that? one of those times when it looks too perfectly yeah. placed where you're like, oh, that's fake. Uh, obviously that's fit. What? That frog is, I'm, my mind is blown. And the, the couch? So in that case, you go pull and then the three huge monster looking guys goes, Gwah! pulls it out that fast. It's, How it was it? actually on wheels. So like, it, and it's, you know, it's like one of those stage couches that weighs like, you know, 15, 20 pounds or something. Wow. Wait, so if you sat on that stage couch, you're just falling through. It's made out of cardboard. It's made out of cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> no. Setup time honestly wasn't so bad, right? But once you get it done, this really fixes three major problems. One, with gimbals, you can generally see steps. You could stabilize a shot in post, but you can't get rid of parallax. That becomes a whole lot more difficult. This does a great job getting rid of that with all the different forms of suspension it has on here, including a set of suspension here and here. As he steps and walks, notice that all of this does translate up to here even, but since there's multiple sets of suspension, by the time it actually gets to the camera, look at that, it's like perfectly dead still. As I jump, on an 85 millimeter, I'm jumping. I mean, the camera obviously is moving a little bit, but it's very difficult to make it move. So it really isolates that step. That's problem number one that it fixes. Problem number two, gimbals are freaking heavy, especially as you bring it up to here, right? Now I know it looks like, oh man, poor Jarrell, he's probably in so much pain right now holding the camera up there, but really the way it's designed and because of this mathematical science stuff that I have no idea what's going on here, because of that, it actually doesn't get heavier as you bring it up, which is kind of crazy because all their systems that are kind of like this, as you bring it up, it becomes heavier and heavier, right? But this, you just hold it up there all day, it doesn't really get heavier as you bring it up. When I first put it on and I actually brought the camera up, that was where I was kind of shocked. All you gimbal operators know what I'm talking about. Try holding a gimbal up here. It takes, it takes so much strength. Look at that. 
Sam, I need you to Photoshop out this rig and just show me <laughs> operating like this. <laughs> it's hard to describe how nice this feels, how even it is just all the way up and down. Yeah. And the third big thing is that you can now put this thing anywhere. You think that it's big, but as soon as I make an adjustment, check out the boom poles. I'm gonna articulate them down. When you made that adjustment here, that makes you lower profile. It limits your range a little bit. But I can put longer rods here and the whole gimbal inverts. Now, instead of the lens being here in relationship to these bearings, it's up here. So that means we can easily hold eye level shots in a low door frame. The Ronin 2 also offers a couple of different ways to control the camera as well. So many, which is great to have uh, wheels. The master wheels are remarkable. I yeah. Think that that's truly one of the most professional ways to operate. Yeah, actually the master wheels we have here. Yeah, we just did a shot with them. What do you think about DJI stuff, huh? I love it. I have a Ronin S. That's Ronin, a good answer because DJ is just standing right there making sure you yeah. say the right thing here. <laughs> so don't let Stuart hear you, okay? <laughs> we have Stuart from DJI showing us some goodies. These are our master wheels. Top tier way to control the gimbal. Most traditional cinematographers can walk up to this and they already know how it works, right? Like they already know how it's going to control the camera. Even looking at the controls of it, like there's only a few dials which they're already familiar with on, uh, you know, on larger systems that are not gimbals. And I'm assuming the wheels is kind of the ideal way for getting that intricate control, huh? Yeah, exactly. And then, yeah, the fine tuning, right? right. But just the very tiny, you know, like there's, there's such a small difference, I feel like, between good content and great content, right? The content that we all love. It's really, it's really in those minor things. You usually use the wheels a lot, right? Yeah, you're, I do your master of wheels. I have my own geared head, I have a mini world. It becomes like a bicycle, you know which way you're going. Right. Right? Because if you don't even think about which way is which. And you just watch and you react. It becomes very zen. You know, I kind of like this. I kind of want one of How much is this? Uh, it's about 10 grand. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the Force Pro, which I actually is my personal favorite, just because how intuitive it is. Like there's an example of this on our Ronin S, Ronin SC with the Force Mobile, where you can use your phone. This is gonna be a bit better than that because it was made for this express function. Um, also, you know, as all of our products, the range, you know, is, is really good, right? So you can get like a mile out with these, you know, it's just it's pretty incredible. You could make a little rig here with like a monitor transmitter and operate it like this. Yeah. You could put it on a tripod, right? So like uh, some will do that, say if it was on like a crane. You could also adjust how directly your movements translates to the gimbal, right? So if exactly. you want that handheld look, you make it really sensitive jerk it around a little bit, or you could dampen it so it's nice and soft, even if you're a little bit shaky up here. Exactly. The way the rollers are configured, you go in and out. So this is for mid-shot handoffs. It's a very smooth, seamless handoff. And you can go through a window, you can connect it to a drone, a crane, do anything you want. You guys have a permit with California State Parks? We just got shut down. Sheriff is threatening me with $500. We only have like 10 minutes to get out of here. So we're gonna see how this does in just a run and gun situation. Can you? Turn the camera around so that he's vlogging. The most expensive selfie stick ever created. You want to walk with it? Yeah, Watch your head. Box. All right, we're just going to go for a jog. How you doing? Good. Good. Can you keep the up? The camera looks pretty stable. Oh, are we going this way? OK. We're shooting like this now. Up the hill. All right. Watch your log. Yep. I just swear, you have like extra eyes somewhere, man. <laughs> Spidey sense. What surprised me was how minimal your crew can be when you're even you're doing this. If so. you needed to, do you think you and just a first AC could go out to a remote location and get some shots with this whole setup? I mean, I hate to say yes, but sadly I do it often. Obviously nice to have the full support team, but if you needed to just go and steal a few shots, you kind of could. Thousand percent. My first AC, Joe Gunawan, who's one of the best in the business, he set up a tilt a handle grip for me a number of times uh, with focus on it. So I can control focus and zoom from a handle. Can we just take a look at this stand though? Look at this. I usually have a bigger screen, a 1303. But because we're in the beach, we're walking around. This is kind of my lightweight. And if I want to, I can take this off. And I could go handheld. And a lot of times I would be following him 
on the terrain. That way I can keep track and I don't, I don't have to lose video signal and make sure he's in focus. But man, we didn't get enough shots of the car. Ah. We, were, uh, we were planning on shooting it with this, but I mean, we just got to get a little mini tour. What you're looking at here is a 1923 Ford Model T Roadster. 1920 what? Three. 1923. A Chevrolet small block 350 cubic inch at 300 horsepower with a turbo 350 transmission out to a Ford eight inch rear end. This is Southern California at its best. <laughs> There's a problem with this. There's no there's door. No, there's no door. No roof. No How do you get in this thing? Climb in. How cool is that thing, huh? Where I would originally design this was for really tiny crews, could go climb a mountain, could go have accessibility to these great shots without even a full crew. But what's turned out also in addition to that is some of the um, huge budget films that have big techno cranes that use all these great shots will use this like a smaller paintbrush. And they go in and do all these nice moves where it just it, it keeps the pace of the set moving. They can get all the precision that they want. They're, the actors aren't waiting. So there's some real benefits for the, for the bigger budgets as well. The third setup I thought was pretty cool was the handheld version, right? But it's, it's kind of like handheld because you still get that handheld feel and look. But at the same time, if you ever try to run with a tight lens in handheld, it gets crazy. But that felt like a almost a stable version of handheld. Well, it's a hybrid. It's, it's actually our handheld bracket. It's a direct hold of a camera without a gimbal. And you get all of the spatial stabilization, all the footstep isolation. We add a little bit of counterweight with the batteries either above or below. And what this enables you, you have some inertia, but it's extremely reactive. How would you say Hollywood's kind of reacting to it? We're slowly picking up converts. Matty Libatique, who does amazing, he's you know, one of the biggest DPs out there right now. Very, very innovative in his approach to storytelling. And he gets a lot of use out of it. But he did it, it was extensively used in uh, Venom, A Star is Born. I know he used it on Native Son, Parts of Birds of Prey. So a lot of movies that he does. Gimbal's had a rough start. They took a lot of knowledge on how to balance them perfectly. Frankly, there was a lot of hardware problems. Um, so they only they were moody. They worked when they wanted to. People had computers out, having to reflash the firmware, and the last thing people wanted to see on a film set. Then they really improved the technology. And the, for a good example, of course, is this one we just worked with, the Ronin 2. Really, they put out a lot of the fires they had in the early designs. So they are really pretty dependable now, and they do open up a new freedom. But the thing that was missing was the spatial stabilization, because a gimbal will give you perfect angular, like roll, pitch, yaw, that'll do that perfectly. But what it can't do is take your footsteps out. Chris Harris, who is an amazing operator, what he first said when he started with the anti-gravity cam is I lost my fear of the foreground, meaning that you don't see that spatial change. Right, and you notice that in all gimbals, even if yeah. it's a small thing or a big right. thing, like if there's foreground, you're gonna kind of see the Yes, and this is why this is like the other half of the gimbal. We have some questions from the Instagram fam. Yeah. Should we see what they have to say? Filmmakers World says, hey! It's not really a question, but what's up, Filmmaker World? What you up? guys know them? Hey, yeah, you know guys have been well. Yeah. Hey. My buddy Lee says, is that a Spider-Man villain? Yeah, that's, we knew that was gonna Doc come Ock. up. We've been getting Always. Doc Ock since the very, very beginning. Yes. Sometimes you want to get a great shot, you gotta look a little bit like Doc Ock. The question I remember hearing coming up was, can it go through doorways? And you said you went through three doorways for that music video? Yeah, so there's a music video with Dumbfounded, and um, unfortunately it didn't make the final cut, but I pulled a character through the bar, a large doorway, a normal doorway, third doorway into a bathroom, and then technically a fourth doorway if you consider a bathroom stall a doorway. They didn't put it in the cut. Ah, uh, don't you hate it when you yeah. put that much effort into a shot and it's like, yeah. How long can you wear that rig before the back pain sets in? I'm I'm feeling pretty great. You were in it for a solid four to five hours, something like that. And With, rarely did you put it down. I mean, I put it down once Yeah. for about five minutes. There's a shot here of him just eating lunch with a camera, an Aerie Alexa rig, just sitting right here. Just just yep. chicken wings. Chicken wings. <laughs> what is all this for? Looks overkill. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I think everybody's first impression is. But it was once my you... first impression. And it folds up pretty small. I mean, once you fold it up, it's just like R2-D2. It sits on your passenger seat. Anybody can pick it up and carry it. It has like an illusion, but um, we've had some very small humans not wanting to take it off. They're having so much fun with it. <laughs> Daniel says, how are you? Doing all right. How are you? Feeling great. Yeah, feeling oh, good? Dude, I just had a great How are you, Adam? Are you doing, you doing I'm doing good. good. Yeah, we had a lot of 
fun today. Yeah, thanks for asking. Is it actually better than a regular gimbal? Yeah, I mean, the big part really is that the gimbal aims the camera in the right direction, and this thing kind of stabilizes it and allows you to bring it up, down, where inside, wherever. It adds to the gimbal. So the gimbal creates all the angular stabilization, the horizon, the roll, and what we create is the spatial stabilization and the spatial moves. Where is Sam? Huh? Where is Sam? I don't know, where is Sam? I'm right here. What the f is that? And where can I buy one? Hey! You go to cinemadevices.com, and all the information's there. I'm Adam, it's Adam at cinemadevices.com, and I always get back to people right away. We're starting to work with more Steadicam ops who are you know, seasoned operators that are just expanding their kits and their abilities, and then there's independent filmmakers. Our whole thing is to make sure everybody's trained out on it, that they're getting the best shots possible, so we want to see it all the way through. But yeah, reach out to me, I love, to, I love talking to filmmakers. Do you occasionally feel like Venom? Well, didn't they use this they to shoot? Venom? Yeah, I think they used the Pro on that okay, one. Okay, nice. I would have loved to see the behind the scenes on that. Yeah. Like there's Venom and then like the guy that looks like Venom filming. <laughs> All right, one final question. Who's Who wears it best? Huh? Huh? This is the most important question, really. Should I go and just order a coffee? You should.